Well, good evening, and what a beautiful, uncensored evening it is. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, all seems right with the world. Well, that didn't last long, did it? Yes, summer has barely started when all hell's about to break loose. If you're hoping to get a train in the UK next week, well, forget it. Millions of people across the country just trying to go about their businesses are facing utter chaos because rail workers are striking over pay and jobs, and they say it could go on all summer. At least 50,000 workers will walk out, meaning fewer than one in five trains will run. Network rail estimates that the strikes will cost the rail industry up to 150 million. Well, Transport Secretary Grant Shapp said the strike could lead to rail workers losing their jobs. I appeal directly to rail workers who I think are less militant than their union leaders. Don't risk striking. Don't risk the industry and your future. Don't risk striking yourself out of a job. Don't pitch yourself against the public. Well, joining me now is the RMT union boss, Mick Lynch, who's responsible for all the mayhem that's about to come our way. Mr Lynch, good evening to you. Good evening. Yeah, I suppose my question is this. We've just come through a two-year pandemic. We have the appalling after-effects rippling through Europe from war in Ukraine. We've just about got over the fractured mayhem of Brexit. Uh, and now, just when it looks like the sun is literally coming out and people can start to feel hopeful and positive about life, along come you, uh, and you're going to cause complete chaos and mayhem for the British public for the foreseeable future. And I only ask you, why do you think this is the right time to do this? Well, the sun's not going to shine on our members, uh, Piers, if they lose their jobs, they're facing pay cuts in relation to living standards, and they're facing having their conditions ripped up. We've been engaging with these employers and indeed the Department for Transport and various ministers for more than two years since COVID commenced back in March 2020. And we've put to them last December that we needed the issues addressed. They've told us that thousands of jobs are going to be removed from the railway by compulsory redundancies if necessary, and that the pay freeze is going to continue. Now, we haven't had any offers on the issues at stake. They've had plenty of time to resolve these matters. And many of our members are going into the third year now where they've not had a pay a pay deal, uh, any increment on their money at all. So we don't want this dispute, but we needed to, to make sure that the message was given, that we're not going to accept our conditions being ripped up and being driven into a form of fire and rehire akin to P&O, which we also dealt with. And we think the, the government is taking the opportunity of COVID, the same as the aviation industry has done, to try and strip out jobs, strip out conditions and make people casualised across the UK. And it's a phenomenon that we're faced with, insecure work, precarious work, and we're not going to accept that. We're going to fight for our... Right, listen, our, I understand you're fighting for your workers. I do. And I'm not against unions, per se. And I've supported actions in the past when I felt that they're justified and they're well-timed. It's the timing of this. It's the fact that so many ordinary people going about their ordinary lives are going to be facing complete chaos for the next week and maybe many weeks after that just at a time when everyone's starting to feel a little bit better about life. And I would put it to you, if you're putting the devil's advocate position on this, the government has pumped billions into the rail industry, as it has many other industries, uh, throughout the, the, the carnage of the pandemic. Uh, Network Rail says they've not announced any job cuts and will find job savings by not replacing employees who leave the organisation through voluntary redundancy. Obviously, I, I guess that's an arguable point between you and well, them. You're after an 11% rise for your members, some of whom, as you know, not all, but some of whom are train drivers earning £54,000 a year. Uh, now, I would say to you, look, I'm not against your workers being protected by you. Uh, you're doing your job. But when it comes to pay rises following a pandemic, why are we not giving nurses 11% pay rises? Police well, I want, workers, 11% pay, pay rises. Rise, People who are really at the real front line of all this? Well, we were on the front line. We, our members worked all the way through the pandemic. They were the driving managers, trains, mate. They were driving trains, they were fixing tracks, they were signalling trains, they were cleaning trains. Yeah, but it's not the same as you know, trains. it's actually saving lives. That's my point. Well, well, it's all comparative. If, well, if we're going to be dishing out public money when there's very little public money to dish out, surely you would accept that health workers, for example, should be first in the line. They were in the real front line, well, not I'll, train I'll try drivers. I'll respond to that. 
I'll try and respond to that, uh, Piers, if I can. Our members worked through the COVID. They were on the front line and railway workers died and transport workers died as a result of being at work during that period. Now, we're not asking for compensation for that. All we're asking for is a pay increase that reflects what we've done uh, during that period and the cost of living. We're also asking that we don't have our conditions ripped up and our jobs stripped back. Network Rail are making these cuts, and they have put to me directly across the table a, a proposed cut of 2,900 uh, track workers, directly. They've done that face to face. So it's just not true that they haven't proposed job cuts. But isn't that, if, isn't that a different issue, which is an issue of technology, that they believe they have technology now which will actually be safer than having human workers on the track potentially risking yeah, their we, lives. Is we that deal not true? with technology all of the time, Piers. Ever since the, the Stevenson's rocket, we've dealt with changing the railway industry. Mm. But we must do that in an environment of agreement, not in position. Now, if it comes to the question of other workers, and there are many deserving workers, and the British worker needs a pay rise, and we're part of the trade union movement, and we want all workers to have a pay rise. But they can't all get 11% can they? 11% is a completely point, mad if figure. If our members do without their pay, nurses won't get a pay rise. Bin workers won't get a pay rise, care workers won't get a pay rise. What will happen is that the train operating companies and others who made £500 million of profit last year in the worst year of train revenues, £500 million they took out, they will just get increased profits. Two of the companies I'm dealing with right now are subject to takeover bids because they're so profitable. First Group, which is the, one of the chief train operating companies, made over £2 million a week last year. Uh, Go Ahead is subject to a takeover where they're bidding uh, highly inflated share prices at £14.50 an hour. These people are making a killing. And it won't go to uh, nurses and other uh, people that deserve. It will go into the profit margins of these companies. I mean, I've been watching you doing interviews for the last couple of weeks and you're passionate about it. And again, I don't, I'm, no problem with you trying to do the best job for your workers. But you've been banging on a lot about there's too many rich people in the country. You, know, you earn one hundred and twenty-four thousand pounds a year, right? I mean, that's not a I don't, that's not a small. I don't. That's your salary package, right? No, it's not. My salary is eighty-four thousand pounds a year. If you What's the total package? And, well, the, the the total package includes tax and national insurance and pension contributions. Well, everyone's but my salary is eighty-four thousand. I'm very happy with that. Everyone's package includes that. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, what's your package? Well, I would hope more than yours. Well, but I'm not why running. Didn't you tell, I, why didn't you tell everyone what you earn? You because me I'm what not. I earn. Well, I tell you why. Because I'm not actually leading out my members. I don't have any on a strike, which yeah. is going to cause huge inconvenience exactly. so to the British people. The majority of people in this dispute are earning between twenty-five and thirty-one thousand pounds. Yeah, but some are only fifty-four thousand, aren't they? Some probably earn more than that. Rail engineers. The median, the, the median salary for a railway worker that we're covering in this dispute is thirty-one thousand pounds a right. year. Right. The train drivers can that, get fifty-four thousand or work, more. Well, that, engineers that, can get up to 50,000. I mean, a lot of your workers earn good money. And my point is really, at a time of economic crisis, when people are literally struggling to feed their kids, when food bank queues are getting bigger, is this the right time for you to be holding the country to ransom for 11% pay rises? Well, we're not holding anyone to ransom. Well, we haven't asked for 11 Well, if you let me answer the question, well, we you haven't just asked denied for a 11 fact. Well, are you going to let me answer the question? I am. We haven't asked anyone in this dispute for an 11% pay rise. We've pointed out that inflation, the RPI, is currently 11.1. At the point we should have done a deal with Network Rail, it was 7.1. And last year, it was 0.9. Other companies, it was around 75 to 8%. So let's get that straight. We're not asking for 11%. You are quoting what that figure because you, you, are, you want because that to be in headlines, where, right? That's where inflation is going, and it's going above 11%. And if we don't get a pay rise this year, we'll have lost out for maybe between 15 okay, I want to show you... or more percent. All right, but just in relation to your personal remuneration, do you not think there's a slight inconsistency between saying there are too many rich people in the country and we're going to take all their money away and you earning but a shared load of cash? I've never said that there's too many rich people. What I've said is that they're, the... the Super rich in this country have never been richer. We've got more billionaires than we've ever needed. And if we want to get equity in this country, we need to restructure that. And that means the British worker getting a pay rise. Are my you, pay, are you, is, set, are you, uh, my are you, pay uh, is set by a vote are at you AGM. A million, are you a millionaire, mate? I'm not a millionaire, no. Really? What? Really? No, I'm not. I spent 38 years on the tools as an electrician, Piers, before I got... Yeah, but quite a few years of 120 years grand in package, that's, that adds up quite well, quickly, doesn't it? 
No, it, well, not particularly, no. The majority of my life I've spent on the tools as an electrician, as a railway worker. Okay. So, I want even to show if my you, money want... was taken off me... So, I work for whatever my union decides, and they do that by a vote of yeah, the members not, at our I'm annual I'm not saying meeting. you don't deserve it. I'm saying if you're going to start talking about there are too many rich people, it's a little bit... Well, rich. you're saying you... I said there were too many rich people. I didn't say there were too many. What yeah, but... I said was there have never been more super-rich people. Right. Well, and we, what now they you're need talking to in do... semantics. Let me, let me what say... They need... Well, I'm not talking semantics. Well, you are I'm talking, talking semantics. What I said. If you say there are too many rich people, there are too many rich people, is what you're saying. You... Well, I haven't said that. What I've said is that there's an imbalance in this society between people who are super rich, who are getting the benefits of dividends and shares, and that needs to be sacrificed a wee bit so that the rest of the people in this country can get a pay rise for the work that they do. Now, that includes you're, health you're, workers right, ask, and care workers, you're, council you're, workers, low-paid people all I over understand. the country. Let me, let me show you your, what I believe is your Facebook page. I want you to confirm or deny if this is your Facebook page. It's a picture yeah, of... Me. Can it's you a see picture the of the hood from Thunderbirds. Can you see the likeness? Well, I'm just wondering where the comparison goes, because he was obviously <laughs> an evil criminal terrorist mastermind uh, described as the world's most dangerous man who wreaked utter, utter, utter carnage and havoc out? on the public. Is that the level you're pitching this at, Piers? That is a joke amongst me and my friends, and you can see the likeness, if you like. So He's you're not denying that you are eyebrows. comparing yourself to the hood? I'm not comparing myself to anyone. I'm me. You've literally made your profile picture the hood. And I'm simply well, saying, I was so a massive... What? If it was a bunch I was of flowers, a Thunderbird I, fan, I, and the hood was, was the most dangerous, flowers, evil person in the world. He's the most evil puppet made out of vinyl in the world. Is that the level your journalism's at these days? I simply asked you if that was you and your Facebook page. Well, do you... Do, do you think I look like the most evil person in the world, Piers? Well, now you're asking me to, to answer a difficult question, Mick. I don't know you that well. All well, I'm I saying is, you the have most personally. Evil in the world. I'm just I think I'm a working class bloke who's leading a trade union in a dispute over jobs, if you, pay, and conditions. I understand. If you don't want to be compared to the hood, probably better not to have the hood as your well, profile I think picture. I think it's quite funny. So do I. But I well, also like. Go. As I was a Thunderbirds fan... we're at, though? Don't you want to talk about the issues rather than a little vinyl simply, puppet from the I'm 1960s when I was simply trying to get inside the mindset of the man about to wreak havoc on the country. It makes <sighs> me laugh, honestly, that you have the hood as your profile pic because that's a man who wreaked havoc on the world. Well, it makes me laugh that your level of journalism has descended so far that you can't think of any other question rather than a, a I thing didn't about put, the, the I Thunderbirds. I didn't put that picture on your profile page. Yeah, but you've chosen to spend two or three minutes of this interview talking about an irrelevance. Because you seem so but irritated by the comparison. Going. Well, because you seem so irritated by the comparison to the I'm hood. not irritated at all. I'm completely... You seem very irritated. Well, I'm not. You're not? This is your non-irritated phase, is it? <laughs> What point are you trying to prove, Piers? I mean, I'm not trying to, point, to I'm not up, trying to prove anything. You, see, you put it on your Facebook page. I'm simply asking. Right. It's an odd choice for a union boss okay. who's about but to go on to ask a, a series of strikes issues? to have Piers, that have you as got your nothing choice. To say about the issues that we face. I, I've made my feelings clear. I think that you yeah. are entitled to do your job, but I think when your job starts to impact massively on millions of people in this country, mm. just at a really hard time for the country, I think you've mistimed this, and I think if you spend the whole summer causing discontent, then I think you're misreading the mood of the nation. Well, what we're trying to do is get a settlement to a dispute, and we will do that and we'll work with all of the companies involved and we'll work with the government if they want to come to the table to try and get a settlement to the dispute, which is a serious one, because I think many working-class people in this country are fed up of being exploited and they're fed up of low pay, they're fed up of precarious work and being vulnerable to, to the uh, changes in society that they've been put through and the economic model that we've got, which is outsourced, uh, and no conditions in their work. We need to change that, and that's what this dispute is part of. Attempt to rebalance power I'm not against, you, I'm not against you negotiating uh, at all uh, on behalf of your members. All I would point out to you, uh, finally, is that Grant Shapps does bear a striking resemblance to Virgil from the Thunderbirds, and from yeah. memory, as a fan of the Thunderbirds, he actually took out the hood. Well, the hood came back every week. <laughs> and maybe that's a message he's got to take, that everyone was in it every week. And they there were locked you see, in a relationship. You see, now and you're, right, the now of you're rising proudly... In a relationship for a while. Right, now you're proudly, proudly positioning yourself <laughs> as the hood. Uh, Mick Lynch, good to talk to you. Is that where you want to go? Go there. I didn't want to go there. You, you went there. But good to talk to you.
I'm getting the hood. I'm getting the hood evils there. Uh